Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts and I'm here with Gavin Perkins, part of the Alia Australian team looking at this, the Bullet R1. First things first, before we look at the Alio, Gavin, do you want to kind of explain your journey with Alio so far? Yeah, so I've been with Alio for about five years, um, working with the team uh, in Taiwan. Uh, it's been an amazing journey so far, getting to know uh, all the ins and outs, uh, how they do things, how they operate, um, how they support everyone, um, the community side of things, it's been amazing. The tech side of things, amazing and uh, just getting to know this, um, this bullet more, more in depth and more uh, intimately and just getting to know the entire range of what it can do uh, has just been awesome. And fun fact, you actually share a birthday with the founders, don't you? I do, yes. And a bit of taste in music. Yeah, we share the same taste in music. Um, I don't know if it's a birthday thing or not, but yeah, it's, um, it's pretty cool. So talking about Alio and their journey, Alia started on Kickstarter, and that was a while ago. And then it was first seen at a trade show in Australia in 2015, where the machine was launched just as a prototype back then. In 2016, Jonas and Jacob, the founders of Alia, came to Australia and did a road show with this machine, where they put on a show and showed all the roasters and came past and showed us what this machine was, what it could do, and really drove interest. It was cool. I think you were there going out for dinner with them and really like getting to know the two brothers was awesome. Like there's, I really like the fact that they come from fashion photography. So they're into design. When you look at this roaster, it really is a design piece. It's beautifully made. It's not just another product roasting coffee. They really thought about it and dived in. And we can talk about that a little later. But that was in 2016. It then took a while to come to the Australian market because the team in Australia really wanted to only bring it to the market when it was perfect. Everything, all of the runway had been fixed, all the minor bugs of the initial launch. So in 2021, it was released here. And we had it at our warehouse, and that's when you guys came back in and showed us how to use this machine. We had a day of it, pulled it apart, had some fun, roasted some coffee, and here we are now. It's currently 2022. Yep. The machine's been accepted well by the market. Yeah. It's a unique machine. It's got so many features that set this up apart. So there was already roasters in the market. There was home roasters and there were commercially sample roasters, think of ProBats. But they were like five times the price. And a lot of the home markets kind of work differently to a commercial roaster. So you couldn't just do a, a roast and transfer that profile commercially. So that's where this machine really bridged the gap. Would you say it, to it totally does? It's um, it's it's almost like a commercial roaster shrunk down to size. You can you can use it in the same fashion. There's there's really nothing like it on the market. It was it's nothing in the same small footprint. Um, it's nothing that can do one kilo. Um, and it's the first roaster to use induction heating. First roaster to use uh, infrared sensor for temperature readings. And um, yeah, really, it's just it just blows everything else out of the water. We might have to dive into what induction heating is and what the infrared sensor and what that meant a little later in the video because they were two major things that came out with this machine that really changed it apart. Yeah. But before this machine, you had your 100, 200, 250 gram roasters and you had your 500 grams, let's say commercial sample roasters or even you know Dietrich IR1 one That's kilo roasters, but the price point was, you're talking about five times the price of this. And the sample roasters, to be fair, the home ones were cheaper, but it was a very big gap between the commercial roaster and what these home units were doing. They're almost like modified popcorn roasters, some of them, or popcorn makers. So looking at what infrared means and that how that infrared induction changed the game for this, can you explain a bit more about how that heats the drum and totally. So the induction works a lot like your cooktop induction yeah. uh, in that it's a, a magnetic field yeah. uh, that works and pulses back and forth. It produces an alternating current, uh, which then um, 
uh, heats the drum. Yep. Uh, so it works a lot like your induction pan. Yep. So the drum becomes like a pan. Yep. Um, but it also becomes like an oven in, yep. in the sense that it's uh, all enclosed. And so you get the bo uh, you're getting both um, uh, pan pan like heating on the surface, yep. but also enclosed in, in like an oven. Um, and the the beauty about the induction is. Um, just the power. Yep. It is. It's like 75% more efficient than gas. Yep. But it has the same um, attributes as gas, so it, you can control it as much like a gas roaster, um, but with only with a 10 amp. It only draws 1500 watts. So you, you're packing a lot of power into such a small footprint. Yep. Um, and you're getting precise control. Um, everything like you would on a gas roaster. Talking about power, it's 1500 watts, so it plugs into a 10 amp socket so it can be used in any home in Australia. That's it. But the important part behind that is the philosophy of the brothers was to build things that last and build things that were environmentally friendly. Obviously drawing less power means less resources being pulled from the earth and a lot of the materials were made so the roaster would last the distance. A lot of the plastics were chosen or the Teflon that didn't become brittle over X amount of rotations. Like normally plastics and Teflon can heat up and, and cool down a certain amount of times and they really made it so it wasn't a product that was gonna become, I guess, a throwaway item. That's right. And I really, I kind of like when companies think about the environmental side of things. So the sustainability of it was super cool. Another thing that you mentioned earlier was IBTS, the infrared beam temperature sensor. And that changed the game in the sense that it's always been the holy grail to try and know the temperature of what the bean was doing inside without lag. Can you explain that a little bit more and why that made a difference or such a difference in this machine? Yeah, so I mean traditionally um, it's always been a, a bean probe yeah. and bean probes are subject to interference, they're subject to lag and um, so Alio decided to find another solution yep. um, and they've gone with the te uh, infrared temperature sensor and uh, what that means is there's instantaneous um, feedback yep. so you got instant results, consistent results. Um, so what that means for data is it's consistent and repeatable. Actually you just mentioned data so I, th I thought I'd jump in. Most roasters commercially are running a software called Cropster, and that's how they kind of get the data from their roaster, bring it into Cropster, look at what's happening and kind of assess and, and do their roast profiling, save their profiling, a lot of things happen there. What Alio did was built their own software and called it Roast Time. Now the difference between Cropster and Roast Time in this perspective is on Cropster you're normally doing the roast, entering the data and modifying that on your commercial roaster, be it ProBat or whatever it might be, manually. With roast time, they're taking that data, and you can actually control this roast either from the control unit there or from roast time, and you can inventorize your beans. You want to dive into that a bit, and we can show them later on the laptop, but do you want to dive a bit into how roast time change this roaster? Yeah, so it's an amazing piece of software. They, they're always developing, always continually evolving the software, trying to make it better, um, and Basically, yeah, you can control the roaster from your laptop if you want to. Yep. You can use it manually um, with the buttons on the control panel, or you can control it through roast time. And roast time logs all of your uh, data. Um, it will save all your profiles um, and your graphs of uh, temperature over time. Yep. You can mark uh, all the phases of your roasts on there, from yellowing to first crack to second crack, yep. um, and to ending of the roast. Um, it records uh, both both sensors of the infrared sensor. Yep. It does have the traditional bean probe sensor in yep. here as well. Um, so it does have both the traditional bean probe and the infrared sensor. Yep. So it logs both of those for you. Um, you can log all of your inventory. Yep. So if you have green beans, you can log all of your inventory. Every time you roast, it will draw down from that. Yep. Um, so it's really a all-inclusive, encompassing software. One thing I actually talk about software is, I remember over dinner, and this is now going back to 2016, when I was talking to the brothers, they not only, and this is when they were still developing the software, they worked on the machine, the software was coming. And they wanted to build the software, not only to be able to control the roaster and be able to do roast after roast, 
but they wanted to turn it into a community where people could share their roasts, share their community. And at some point, I, I know it hasn't come out yet, so it may never come out, but they did talk about people being able to become like micro roasters and, and sell, buy and sell green beans and also buy and sell roasted coffee within their community, effectively at a marketplace. And if turning anyone that has one of these into a mini business, and from there, with the, a cafe that has one of these, allowing the cafe to operate in different fashion. Cafes traditionally make coffee for a customer, whether it's in-house or takeaway. And their thought philosophy was not taking anything away from the commercial roaster. So you're still buying your blend from the roaster you are, but then doing a coffee of the day or coffee of the week, a single origin in-house. So allowing the barista to learn a lot more about the coffee and the craft of coffee, to then give that customer an experience, be able to talk about the bean, be able to talk about the sensory experience, and also be able to bring an experience center into a cafe. So they wanted to not only bring experiences into cafe, allow people to be engaged in a coffee community, allow people to have micro businesses. So they were really trying to tackle something a lot bigger than making a roaster. That's it. Yeah, and like the beauty about that is um, cafes can roast to order. Yeah. Um, they, can, they can focus on specialty coffee yeah. and, uh, and not have any go to waste. Yeah. Um, they, can, they can roast it fresh for the customer. Yeah. And that's the, that's the best part about this is the, you don't need to roast you know, 10 kilos at once and have five kilos sit on the shelf. You can roast a kilo at a time. And that goes from 100 grams to a kilo. It does, yeah. And you can roast back to back. There's obviously a little bit of a technique, but it does allow you to kind of go almost straight after each other. Yeah, you can do back-to-back -back roasts on this, which is amazing. Um, there's a little function to be able to do that. And more recently, everyone's, um, as more bullets are out there yeah. in the field, people have been experimenting with smaller batches. Yep. And uh, usually from, from green bean supplies, you get um, samples yep. from about 100 to 150 grams. Yep. And so for people to be able to use this as a sample roaster, yep. people have been experimenting with the smaller batches now. Yep. And yeah, as time has gone on, um, there's more and more examples of that. And through the Roast World community, yep. you can uh, go on the website, yep. uh, find these recipes yep. that people have made, download them, be able to replay them, uh, play them back. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the other beauty about Roast Time is it has a playback function, yep. so it automates every power move, every yep. fan move, and every drum move that you've made. Yep. Um, and you don't need to touch a button. Yep. Um, I know you can save your own profile, you can download other people's profiles. So they've really made this kind of a machine for the coffee community. And that's how Elio are growing. Yep. Uh, they learn from the community, they, they listen to the community. Um, there's a, uh, a community page, almost like a Reddit page, yep. I guess. Um, called community.roast.world. Yep. Um, there's everything on there from setups to troubleshootings to um, to roasting examples to help and and Ailey are quite active on there. Talking yeah. about community, one thing I actually really liked about it is when you get an Ailey, it doesn't have a manual or a USB in the box. What they do give you is a web address to go because you can download the latest information because they almost keep the information on the how-tos and how everything about the machine, almost like as a wiki where it's constantly evolving. They haven't really thought of the machine. We've built a product out to the market and there you go. Their view of it, it's a constantly evolving scenario, not just in, from the machine perspective, but from the platform, from the community. They want to be a constant evolution. That's it. Yeah, they're always, always trying to um, share and, and learn and, uh, and continue to develop things with the community and pass it along to the community. So before we dive in and do a roast on the bullet and kind of have a look at the software, do you want to just talk about the maintenance of this machine, the cleaning, and if you were to put it in your home, the venting options to kind of be able to use it at home and because there is some smoke that comes out of this. There is, yeah. So maintenance wise, it's, it's quite straightforward. Um, coffee also uh, obviously produces a lot of chaff, yep. chaff coming off the beans. There's a, a collector back here, which yep. is easily removed. Uh, it's got a little um, plug that you uh, undo, just dump it in the yep. bin, you can put it on your garden, it's yep. amazing. Um, regular maintenance, uh, they say after 10 kilos um, to remove the front face, yep. uh, clean the infrared sensor, 
They give you all the tools. Tool. It comes with a toolkit. It's actually the toolkit. Sorry amazing. to interrupt. The toolkit is it's well finished. I like. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's totally goes with the bullet aesthetics. Yeah. And um, they want you to get in, clean it, yep. maintain it yourself. They give you videos online on how yep. to do that. So they, so they do have videos online, so you're never really left alone. As, as much as roasting can be quite complicated, there is a bit of hand-holding from Alio. Yep. So you get the tools, you can pull apart, you can clean it. And how can you vent it? Because I think that's a common question. Yeah, totally. So. Obviously, like you said, it does produce a lot of smoke. Yeah. It's kind of like if you, if you were to cook a steak yeah. at home and not have the range hood on, yeah. you're going to have a lot of smoke. Yeah. So if you're roasting inside, you're going to need to have a, a form of venting, yeah. venting that. You can actually roast underneath your range hood if yeah. you want. Um, otherwise, obviously outdoors, yeah. it's probably better. Um, a lot of people uh, use um, venting ducts. Yep. Um, the main main thing is this: uh, the, the bullet has an active fan here, yep. so you don't want to cover that up yep. and uh, and draw from an active fan. So when it comes to venting, there is a few different options. You can put it under your range hood in your kitchen. That's one simple option. Roast outside, or you can connect a vent to it, like a duct, it's just like you get in a home air conditioning. Alia does have on their page the different options and scenarios to kind of help you work out what's best for you. So with that aside, should we jump in and see this machine in operation? Let's do it. Let's jump in and roast some Ethiopian natural to kind of see the roast process. Bear in mind, it will be a little bit noisy with the roaster going, but hopefully we can just show the workflow of how it all works and how the software works. Sure thing, yeah. Yeah, so we'll jump in, we'll yep. preheat the machine and uh, we'll use this button here which is PRS, yep. that stands for Preheat, Roast and Shutdown. Okay, cool. So we'll, uh, we'll fu uh, function through that. We'll... So we're on PH which is Preheat. Preheat. And how long does this process take? And so Preheat is going to take roughly sort of 20 to 30 minutes depending yep. on what temp you set it to. Yep. Kind of like your oven. Yep. So. Uh, you don't really want to put your, you know, your roast chicken in an yep. oven that's not preheated yet. Yep. So you want to wait till this gets up to temp until it stabilizes. I uh, like the analogy, but I don't know how to cook. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, we can learn today. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you want to wait till it stabilizes before you put the beans in. Yep. We'll let this preheat. I'm dying for a coffee. All right. Let's have a quick coffee and we'll come back once it's heated and keep going. Let's do it. We're back from our coffee. We can smell the, the roast. It's got this nice smell as it heats up. That's We've got our beans ready to go. And we're just gonna dive in and see how the automation works. Yep, we'll dive in. I'll show you how the software works, how we can use the previous roast yep. to automate the new roast. And we'll go from there. Sweet, let's have a look. Right, so we'll dive in. This is currently where we're at with the preheat. What I'm gonna do, we'll go to our roast history. I'm gonna find one that we've already done and I'll show you how we automate. So there's a drop down here and we can go playback. And what that's gonna do is uh, automate every step that uh, we've previously roasted um, from power settings to drum settings and fan settings. Okay, okay so we're ready to load our bench. that's showing everything in real time there, right? That's showing everything in real time. And uh, yeah, we're ready to load our beans. Yep. Um, when the beans go in, it automatically detects that they've gone in. Yep. It'll start the process. Sweet. Yeah. So we're just gonna load her up. Load her up. And it'll automatically start as soon as the beans hit, right? Oh yeah. And once we load her up, we remove the hopper. And we put in back the cork to keep the, yeah, not actually cork, in. but to keep the temperature That's it, in. keep the heat in, keep it like an oven. All right, the beans are in there. Let's leave it for 10 minutes and come back right. and then finish off the roast. All right, let's do it. Obviously the beans are done. Yep. They're in here. They've cooled down now. And there's something magical about just looking at them and playing with them. It's just, I don't know, something about creating your own coffee that's... Yeah, it's it's... I guess it's also like having your own coffee machine at home, yeah. being able to experiment, play with different uh, recipes, different brew methods when you with your coffee, you can do that with roasting. Now that the roast is done, do you want to explain to me a bit what happens through the roast process and 
where you can see on the control there. Sure. So once the green beans go in, yep. we uh, go into a process of drying. They dry out. They go through um, a caramelization process. Yep. And then uh, they end up looking brown like you, uh, you normally see everywhere. And the whole time you can see it through side glass here. It's actually nice. I find it therapeutic to watch them change colour over time. That's it, yeah. Um, so we've also got the trier so yep. you can you can smell. So roasting is engages all the five senses really. Yep. You've um, you've got the, the smell, the sight, yep. um, the sound uh, and obviously tasting at the end yep. and uh, and touch so you know um, you're engaging with the roaster. So it's 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 really um, uh, quite a, a sensory uh, engagement. Yeah, and then through the whole process, you can either obviously see it on your laptop, the flow and the data, but you can also see what the roaster is doing through the control there. Yeah, so if you're more of an old school person, yeah. you don't you don't use laptops so much, yep. you can fully operate the, the um, machine through the control panel. Yep. So what it gives you up the top, it will give you the readout of your, um, your either your bean probe or yep. your infrared sensor. Yep. The next um, panel down will give you the, the rate of rise readout. Yep. The rate of rise is how quickly your beans are taking on heat yep. per minute. So yep. it, it may be so, something like 15 degrees per minute, depending on how, how hard you're pushing it. Um, and then the next down here, you've got your power settings. So power settings from um, zero to nine. Yep. So zero is actually off. So yep. you can roast with zero power. So depending on how you like to roast, some people like to do a soak at the start with no power. Yep. Some people might uh, need to turn the power completely off at the end and That's just let the momentum. One of the big features of this machine is you got the nine stages. That's it, yeah. So nine stages through your power settings, yep. nine stages through your fan settings. Yep. And fan being um, the fan at the back, yep. how much uh, you're drawing out of the drum. Yep. So uh, less fan, the more uh, um, heat you're going to retain inside the drum. Yep. Higher fan settings, the more um, heat you're going to pull out of the drum. Yep. Um, which kind of, I guess you want to say like it puts on, puts the brakes on the roast. Yep. It'll, it'll, um, if your roast is getting quite high in temperature. Yep. Um, sometimes you don't always want to drop the power, or sometimes dropping the power doesn't always do what you want it to do. Yep. You can coincide that with taking heat out. Um, so by using the fan. A bit of a balancing act depending on what it you is, want to do. Yeah, it's always, it's up to the individual roaster. Some people like to have a fixed fan throughout yep. the roast and they don't like to change it much. Um, and we've also got drum settings from one to nine as well. Yep. Slower drum setting um, being um, more contact time with the, with the drum. Yep. So the beans don't get agitated as much. Yep. Slower drum settings can cause uh, what they call tipping and scorching yep. because the drum acts as sort of like a hot plate. Um, so the more contact time can sort of burn the outside of the beans. So they do have uh, faster drum settings to avoid that as well. So once again, it's all up to the individual um, and how they like to roast and what suits them and flavors and all that kind of and stuff. And the cool so. thing is someone starting out, you can download profiles that are controlling all of this and pretty much dump the beans in. And yeah, through. like we like we touched on earlier, the uh, roast time yeah. um, has a, uh, a, another back, back yeah. end called Roast World, yeah. which you, you can search for beans, yeah. you can search for other users, yeah. and you can find their profiles and download and, uh, and use that as a reference and a starting point. I know a lot of people do like going old school and the whole sensory experience. Yeah. I like tech. I do like seeing the graphs on the screen. Yeah. They don't really know what they're doing because roasting is not my forte, <laughs> but I do like watching it. Yeah, I mean, like, like we said earlier, you can fully automate or you can fully roast from just the, uh, from the control panel. You can mark first crack from yep. the control panel and uh, yeah, you can cycle through all the modes through here. It's got a menu function on here as well, which you can dial in your preferred preheat temps, yep. your preferred drum speeds, and um, calibrating and all that kind of stuff. And lastly, just wrapping back around, but it is beautiful, like visually, everything about it, like I don't know if you can really see on camera, but the finish, the design, it really is kind of something completely on a different topic, but I feel like a kind of Apple design. It's really thought of, everything's beautiful, every screw is beautiful, placed right. There's something 
like a showpiece, timeless design that's gone into this. Yeah, definitely people will, will love to have um, this on display. Yeah. It's not something you just kind of hide in the closet. It's, yeah. it's, it's very tactile, all the, all the finishes are, are done super well. The materials that used on this are super high end. Even and down to the sticker here on the side, this is obviously has a serial number and model and that the typography, it's just neat. Like you can tell they've come from the design world. Totally, yeah. Gavin, thank you for coming today. I've learned so much from you on this machine from a technical perspective. Awesome, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And if you have any questions for me or Gavin, if they're technical, maybe address Gavin. Hit us up in the comments below. And if this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up. And like always, please subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next video.